Hi everybody, JJ with Experiences with My Dog, and today we're going to be talking about the Purple Pet Bed and my experiences with it over the last almost eight months, and whether or not it's really worth $300. So let's go ahead and find out quite a bit more about the Purple Pet Bed. So when we take a look at the overall um, design of the Purple Pet Bed itself, it's pretty straightforward. They offer it in three different sizes. Um, there's going to be kind of like a small, a medium, and a large. So for the small, you're gonna have 19 by 26. Uh, then for the medium, you're gonna have 29 by 38. And then for the largest size, it's gonna be 38 by 50. Now that you're all gonna have a five inch height. Um, that's, I think, an interesting differentiation between a lot of other beds. And many other, I'd say, more traditional dog beds, especially memory foam uh, beds, you're probably gonna actually have, I think, a lower clearance in terms of the height. Probably somewhere maybe between as little as, maybe about two inches, two and a half inches, up to about four, maybe four and a half inches. <laughs> definitely more high-end types of memory foam beds, you can definitely see see in that four and a half, five, and even six inch um, as far as their overall height. But the reason why that's important is I think though for some dogs, especially as they get older, that can be sometimes a little bit more challenging is kind of just getting that little bit of a, a hump over that initial part to kind of less, uh, lay into the bed. And there's definitely kind of different types of beds on the market that sometimes they have different levels to them that allow the dog to think more comfortably kind of get into it. So this is something to keep in mind. In terms of the price point, as we noted when we were first talking about the bed, it definitely can get pretty expensive. Um, um, the entry level model in terms of the small sizing, that's approximately about $150, notwithstanding, of course, uh, taxes. And then, of course, you move all the way up uh, to the highest end one is $270. And then right there in the middle, a little bit less than $200 at about $190. So definitely all the way around, these are fairly expensive. Now, the construction is going to be identical across all of these. So they're all going to feature that hyperelastic polymer or what Purple calls their smart comfort grid. And we're definitely going to talk more about that as we actually get in the inside of the bed and really see how this is constructed. Um, they then use two different layers of foam. They're essentially a, a poly foam material that's underneath the hyperelastic grid itself. Uh, and then there's an overall cover. Um, and then underneath the cover, there's an actually an inner layer that's not removable. And we'll talk about uh, why I'm not definitely a fan of that overall type of design, especially for a dog bed. But when we take a look at the overall design as a whole, I think it's a um, good looking design. It's got, a, I think, a little bit of a, a clean, minimal design footprint to it. It's predominantly kind of gray monochromatic. It has a little bit of a sheen, maybe a little bit of kind of a hatching pattern in terms of the uh, the textured finish that it has. So I think it looks good. You've got uh, purple piping that's, of course, present throughout the com uh, throughout the, the dog's bed. And this is kind of a hallmark of the purple pet beds, um, as well as, of course, the purple human beds. So as we noted here with this purple pet bed, you've got these four different layers. Um, looking a little bit closer at the overall construction of the bed, it's pretty good. Um, I'm not gonna say that it's outstanding, and in some ways, I definitely actually think it's a little bit mediocre, especially for the price you're pairing. I think definitely compared to some other beds, it could be far better. So if we kind of go from a top level perspective, let's first take a look at the entirety of the outside. You can see it looks clean, um, no issues there. It's got essentially two different types of covers. The outer cover is polyester, vicose, and spandex. Um, Vicos, for those of you who don't know, it's essentially a derivative bamboo. This is good. They advocate that it's antimicro antimicrobial. Um, it's essentially uh, moisture resistant or kind of like water resistant. Um, and I definitely found in my testing that holds up. You can see definitely here as I kind of pour water over the fabric. I didn't have any issues in terms of it actually permeating going through the fabric and then hitting the inner layer. So that's good. So if you know if you accidentally spill something or your pet has like I'd say a small accident, there's no problems. Where I think there's a much bigger issue at play is that when you get, get into the next Next layer. The next layer is polyester and spandex um, that covers essentially the hyperelastic polymer and then the two foam cores that really make up the bed. This is not removable. Uh, now I went ahead and cut it open because I wanted to be able to see really how the bed was construction. You'll, you'll see that here in a little bit. Um, but that's thing that I really, really don't like. Now this layer itself is also moisture resistant. You can see as I kind of pour over water, water also doesn't break through. But Accidents do happen, and we actually did have an accident happen. Um, now, all my dogs, you know, they go uh, to the bathroom regularly, no issues in, inside the house or anything like that, but sometimes things do occur, and Modoc had an accident in the crate, and I think we didn't get home for maybe about like an hour, an hour and a half, and actually I had to clean off the the cover, um, and it was a number one and a number two accident. So it had a chance to kind of settle in there a little bit, and I was able to wash it, no problem. All that came out, that was great. But it actually had seeped through the top layer, so the outer layer, and then gone into the uh, secondary layer, and even it had seeped through that layer. Now it didn't get 
enough to where it actually got into the foam. Um, but definitely you can see that that having, I think, a better quality inner liner and one that would have been fully removable and also could have been washed would have been ideal. Now, because I cut mine open, I didn't uh, cut it open to the point that I destroyed it. I just cut it open enough that I could remove the bed and then I was able to wash the inner layer. So that is just something you definitely want to keep in mind and definitely tell you that there are other beds that do have a secondary internal layer that is more robust and can also be fully washed. So definitely I, I think that the overall kind of design in that regard could be improved upon. Now kind of moving to the next point here, if we talk about say the overall experience with these covers in itself, of course your point of access is gonna be utilizing a zipper. And definitely I can tell you again here, another very negative point I think on this bed, especially for again, the price point of the bed, doesn't matter whether we're talking about the $150 smaller size or the $300, they're both using this really kind of mediocre, very thin zipper. The zipper is very, very, very small. So it makes it hard to kind of unzip and zip this unit. Um, and actually I have concern that over enough time, I'm sure probably some of you have experienced the fact that if you kind of pull on these zippers, either one, it doesn't necessarily gear correctly on the on the track and either can kind of get inconsistently locked um, or, you know, worst case scenario, maybe the actual zipper breaks. This is not like a much higher quality, let's say thick uh, YKK, like, you know, six, eight or 10 type zipper that you can have that you are really nice and seen on kind of better quality travel type equipment that I would love to see, you know, that type of nice, smooth, broad zipper. You could even actually go to different types of what are called like aqua guard zippers, which actually self seal um, and help to mitigate any type of moisture getting through those areas. Um, while also the kind of zipper can somewhat be hidden within the way that the actual bedding is designed. It's not purposely uh, designed in that way. And so some dogs which are really smart can actually even find zippers and pull zippers. So again, this is an area that I think could have been improved upon on the bed, especially again at its price point. So moving away from the external aspects of the bed, now let's actually get on the inside of the bed. And this might be maybe the area that I was most disappointed in. Uh, to be frank, you know, I think the big thing that makes this bed so special is the hyperelastic polymer. And while I definitely know that now uh, Purple has come out with a number of different versions of the Purple human bed, and they don't all utilize the Purple material exclusively, I still think that if you really talk about how much you're paying, you're paying a pretty good amount for actually a pretty small amount of purple material. Um, and the way that it's actually bonded, I think, to the foam, it's fairly poor. It's 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 almost just kind of glued to a, a thin fabric material. And then, of course, that is uh, glued onto the foam. And they don't give you any information, actually, on what type of glue they're using. There is many different types of glues. These can off-gas differently. And, you know, I'd love to know that they're using, you know, maybe a water-soluble, non-toxic-based glue. But they don't tell you any of this information because maybe worst case scenario, what happens if the dog was to eat this, you know, if they were to rip it and get into it. So I really like to have a more kind of complete comprehensive sense of really all the materials that have gone into the bed, but that hasn't been communicated. And while we'll talk about this at the very end, Purple, sadly, I think on our transparency scale, didn't really do great. I gave them over a week uh, to be able to answer actually questions on different aspects of the bed's design and its construction, and they didn't actually follow up with us. If they do, though, I will go ahead and link that information in the description if they do go ahead and get back to us at some point. Now, uh, if we take a look here, another, I think, big issue that I found within their quote-unquote smart comfort grid is that the actual hyperelastic material actually had I'd say cracks or rips present within it. And so of course, these actually provide the structure, um, you know, these kind of squared structures throughout the entirety of this grid to be able to balance your dog's weight and be able to distribute it. And the thing is, if they're ripped, they don't work really the way that they're intended to. And I found quite a number of them that were actually ripped. Now, as a whole, the Smart Comfort Grid still worked as intended. But again, this is kind of one of these things I think definitely at this price point and compared to traditional types of breads that aren't using this, you would never have this type of issue. Uh, with foam, you wouldn't see this if it was just a pure memory foam bed. Um, you know, if it was a latex bed, I've never seen that type of issue within a latex uh, based bed. And, you know, of course, I'd say with more natural based uh, textiles, whether you're talking about kind of cotton or you're talking about wool or even polyfill, um, again, you wouldn't have these type of issues. So I think overall construction could definitely be improved upon. And you can see here uh, when taking a look at the kind of the uh, entirety of the smart comfort grid and how it's been bonded, uh, definitely not the greatest in terms of the overall construction. So now that we've pretty much talked, I think, about the overall kind of the bed and the construction, what it's made of, kind of how it stacks up from price point and sizing, uh, let's actually talk about the real world experience. So um, 
It's been interesting. Uh, you know, I think the first thing that we'd actually decided to try to measure, and definitely in I think our forthcoming uh, dog reviews, and maybe even this one I'll follow up on, I wanna bring a much more kind of scientific process to really being able to show you guys uh, clear differences between one dog and another. So what I did, kind of just initial kind of uh, check, was doing a temperature test. So I used an IR gun to be able to measure the temperature. Um, essentially with no dog laying on it. So essentially it had just been laying on the um, the carpet in the living room and I let it sit there for a while and kept the ambient temperature consistent. Uh, it was approximately about 70 degrees. And then I went ahead and put it into Modoc's crate and I let Modoc actually then go to sleep and he was in there for approximately an hour, a little over an hour with the two different beds that I tested in it. So I tried the purple pet bed and then I also tested uh, Dog Bed for Less who actually makes probably one of the most popular dog beds, uh, which is a good value proposition that's available on Amazon. So it's, uh, you know, when we talk about the sizing, it's literally about almost a third the cost, um, pretty comparable in terms of the overall thickness, but it's entirely based memory foam. And so of course the big criticism on memory foam is that it retains a lot more heat. So how did the temperature stack up? Well, first and foremost, the overall temperature at ambient was essentially almost the same between both beds. You didn't really see any difference. There were approximately about 70, 71, 72 degrees. Um, once we went ahead and let Modoc lay in the beds for about an hour period of time, the purple bed bed heated up to its peak, which I think got up to somewhere between about 76 to about almost 79 degrees. Um, in contrast, when we compare that to the dog bed for less, the dog bed for less was pretty much almost about the same exact type of heat pooling. So I didn't really see that one provided a superior heat benefit. Now there are more ways to do heat assessment. I'm gonna be looking into those um, that might be a little bit more comprehensive, but taking a look at that and then also secondary thermal probe that I also placed under, I saw overall pretty similar uh, thermal results, meaning that it's not like one was significantly cooler than the other after that hour period of time. And you know, especially for larger breed dogs, uh, Modoc for reference is about 60 pounds. Um, you know, of course they're gonna have maybe more heat pooling and maybe that's where they wanna get off the bed because maybe it doesn't feel Feel comfortable enough um, for them. Now then I also checked the temperature after about a five minute period just to see how much the beds kind of quote unquote cooled down. And the overall kind of heat dissipation was pretty close to that. I think the purple pet bed might've been maybe about one or two degrees better, but again, it wasn't like it was substantially cooler uh, than the dog bed for less bed. So overall, when we talk about, I think the thermal performance between these beds, I'd say it's a wash and your overall experience is gonna be pretty similar between the two of them. So don't necessarily expect to get the purple pet bed and again, have it be that it's gonna be so much cooler uh, than let's say a traditional, let's say a very popular or a pretty good quality um, memory foam bed. So wrapping things up, um, there's been kind of a lot of different aspects that we've kind of evaluated this bed in. And uh, I can definitely tell you, I left the bed out a lot of times and we actually had a halo pet bed, which had boosters in it, which has a polyfill based material in it and kind of an egg crate foam that's built into it. Uh, we then had a treated dog bed, which has a kind of boosters and it also has a dual layers of kind of memory foam in there. Uh, we've got the dog bed for less, we have the purple pet bed. And I can tell you that overall my experience generally found that it was the least popular bed amongst my three dogs, so Bowie, Modoc, and Ultron. None of them generally, I'd say, were consistent about really going to it. They generally preferred either laying on the carpet, uh, laying on the couch, um, or laying on any of the other, uh, any number of the other beds that we had out. Now, this doesn't mean that they never laid on it. There definitely were times that they did go ahead and lay on it, and you can definitely see cases in here. And overall, I do think, um, you know, it's fairly comfortable for them. But there are some definite factors that I think you do want to keep in mind. Um, one. I think that the overall hyperelasticity, the bounciness that this bed has actually could be a little bit maybe jarring or weird for some dogs. When you actually kind of get on it, because it, it kind of is balancing out your weight, right? Um, excuse me, well, balancing out your dog's weight, some dogs may actually kind of feel a little bit weird to this. Um, if you actually really look at the way dogs work um, when it comes to kind of settling in a kind of a space for them to get comfortable into, they will dig. Um, a lot of people criticize the dogs on this, but this is genetic. This comes from actually them being in the wilds and um, you know being in outdoor spaces or caves and they would dig to kind of burrow in a space that they could kind of curl into. Um, and so that's why a dog will do this on their normal bedding. And in this regard, the purple bed bed definitely, I think, was uh, good enough in terms of being resistant. Uh, Ultron is probably the heaviest digger that we have of the group. Um, he likes to kind of really scratch into beds and the bed didn't rip and definitely he had a couple of times that he went in a pretty heavy. So I will say that the material is pretty tough in that regard. But because of the way that material is designed, it doesn't really kind of wear and you can't really kind of create a more dented space into it. Um, Ultron's primary bed is actually a baffled memory foam bed. And the baffling is important because it kind of keeps 
the foam pieces uh, spread evenly throughout, but it does allow it still to kind of take a shape over time. And so there's a little bit kind of more of a divoted space. And I think that for a lot of dogs, they're gonna feel more comfortable kind of creating this kind of more uh, curled in type of experience where the purple pet bed it's not going to flatten. It's not going to kind of create a shape that you can kind of feel comfortable in over a period of time. And I think for some dogs, they may not like that. Maybe other dogs may like the kind of the even balanced support that it does provide. Um, but it is kind of something to see. Now you can see here, here are a couple of different shots just kind of showing you what the experience of like is kind of how a dog gets onto the purple bed bed versus some of the other beds. And you can definitely see that there's a difference in kind of the way that the weight is distributed um, between let's say the purple pet bed and let's say the dog bed for less bed. Um, you know, overall, do I still think that, like I said, they both hold up? Yes. And you know, did Modoc or has Bowie or has Ultron all laid on it and generally had, I think, you know, a, a comfortable experience? Yes, but it is kind of something to keep in mind. I also really don't like the fact that the bed doesn't have boosters. Uh, I think, you know, having kind of the bolsters or kind of boosters that you see in pet beds, I think a lot of dogs do like have something that they can kind of curl up against, put their head on, put their shoulder on, kind of just lean into and ultimately make for uh, a more comfortable experience. So wrapping things up, ultimately, do I really recommend this pet bed? I'm gonna give it a marginal passing, you know, just about where I, I moderately approve it. Um, you know, really from a value proposition, um, you can get the dog bed for less right now from Amazon for less than $90, um, you know, or right about $90. And keep in mind that it comes with, um, you know, a removable inner liner and an external liner. And they have five different types of covers, um, which, you know, are all about, you know, I'd say in around the 20-ish, $25 range. That's really important because some different dogs, sometimes they, they might like the bed, but they might not like the external material. Um, the dog bed for less, you can get in velour, you can get it in kind of a more ballistic type of nylon material, you can get it in a denim material. So you can find kind of one that not only fits for your aesthetics, but maybe actually is more comfortable for your dog's coat. And this is really important. Some dogs have far more sensitive kind of skins and coats than other dogs. Ultron's a very short haired dog uh, compared to Bowie. Bowie, you know, she'll lay straight on tile and she's not bothered by it at all, um, but she has a much thicker coat. And so uh, having been able to have the ability to kind of swap these out, I think can be very important. And Purple just flat out doesn't offer this. And they've communicated that they're not offering it in any other aesthetic choices. And you can't even buy a replacement color cover, which for me, I think is absolutely just a huge negative because what happens if something happens in that cover? Um, it's a very non-traditional size in that respect, so it becomes very difficult to be actually able to replace that. Um, so value proposition, you know, like I said, up to $300 for the largest size when you compare that to you know you can get some very good quality dog beds um you know at about a third or half the price even some really great full natural options like savvy rest has a really outstanding option which is large and it's a natural uh, latex material and an organic cotton you know cover for 150 bucks so um said i think okay now one you know last credit though i will give to purple is that they do offer a similar kind of trial program that they offer for their human beds which i think is fantastic so i think while it's more expensive um you know outside of the one-year warranty they are giving you a hundred night trial program available to you if you buy it directly from them so if you do want to try it out for your dog and of course you can hopefully make sure that nothing happens to it um and it's still in a condition that can be returned you can take advantage of this hundred night um you know trial and see if ultimately this really is a good dog bed for you. Um, and this is something that I definitely think is a, pun a, a positive because, you know, for many other dog beds for many other places, they generally have a pretty hard policy that once the dog bed is purchased, you cannot return it back to that location. Um, so this is at least a little bit of a kind of flexibility on that your initial investment, you know, if your dog doesn't enjoy it for X different reasons, then, you know, you can at least get your money back. So overall, hopefully you found this review on the Purple Bed Bed insightful, interesting, and useful. Uh, if you did, I'd love to have you guys hit that subscribe button. Again, make sure to check out our Patreon link to find out how you can support us and, and help to enable more dog bed re uh, reviews, as well as many other cool dog related products in the future. Um, and if you have any comments or feedback, also make sure to go ahead and drop them into the comment section. So with that, um, don't forget to subscribe, like the video, share it, and check us out on Instagram. So with that, take care, take it easy, enjoy the rest of your day, and don't forget to spay and your dogs.